Hello everyone and welcome to the stupendous Gran Turismo Sport FIA Championship race at Goodwood in the minis. This race has absolutely everything, all out war, strategic, working together, battling to the very, very, very last corner. It was absolutely insane. Let's look at how we get there. This is the quali lap, so just finished my lap here and I'm going to take you through the lap in this mini because quite an unusual combo for Gran Turismo Sport. This first corner here really 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 easy to understeer off the left of the track if you don't get close enough to apex on the right side you will you can see how close i am to the grass there millimeters away from ending up in the grass and in the barrier but we just about keep it on the black stuff and i think i might just be in the slip of the mini ahead i think you're going about 101 here without slips if we just creep ahead of 101 102 maybe even 103 no tupping out yeah 102 103 so we might just be in the slip which is good that's going to give us extra tents for free Slipping Gran Turismo is, I think, seven and a half tenths, between seven and seven and a half tenths. And uh, you can see the driver ahead, he takes a very bad line for that corner, which means we're going to close up quite a bit again. Possibly good news for us, we don't want to close up too much. And at this point, I had no idea how I was going to be doing in this poly session. Hadn't done much practice. Like I said, a very unusual combination. I'm used to driving GT3, GT4 cars, GT2 cars, very high downfall sort of grip. Here we are on, like, basically the tyres have zero grip. There's zero aerodynamic grip. They kind of waffle around these minis, but the racing, the racing is intense. So let's see how we're going to do here for this quality lap. On the back straight, it's looking interesting up ahead. I'm a little bit worried. Okay, so the Dutch driver's pulling out. I definitely want to get into that gap. He looks like he's trying to line himself up for a slipstream. I'm definitely going to go for that. Don't think there's any contact, although we are going side by side still. And uh, he kind of washes out. So let me know in the comments if you thought I was a bit unfair there. But I felt like I needed to go for that. And the guy ahead does clip the barrier, so we're going to have to... Um, swerve out of the way, which is going to cost us time in these cars because they do lose a lot of speed when you apply that turning lot. And let's see what happens when we go over the line. It's going to be a 140.8, which doesn't mean a lot to me, but we're on pole by, well, we were six tenths, now we're one tenth on pole. And believe it or not, when it's all said and done, we're going to stay on pole. This never happens. Pole position for FIA, bring it on. So it's not my strongest lobby, 239 points, but it's still a good lobby for me, almost 240 points. And we're going to try and win this one now. We're on pole position. We know we've got the pace. How much of it was a fluke? How much of it was just downright pace? I don't know. I was asking my Discord, by the way, as I was gridding up, do I need to use traction control or not? And I got told in my Discord, yes, use traction control. And it works an absolute treat. So make sure if you do want the best GT Sport tips, join our Discord in the description. Also, like and subscribe this video. You'll be guaranteed to win your next FIA Championship race. No refunds on that. <laughs> no, no guarantees. Right. And here we go. So we're in, in first place. And Sam behind is the driver that we've raced quite a few times for France. So I think he's going to nudge us here. I think I might have skipped. I shifted up too early there previously. So that's why I lost a little bit of speed. So we had a good start. But then we shifted up too early or too late or something like that. And Sam behind did nudge us. Which is an absolute lifesaver. Because we, if we we're going to squabble into these corners here. As the pole man. You kind of the train can go past you and you just can't get back in that train you can lose so many positions so the onus is back on me now to have some really 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 good sectors and try and break away from the pack behind and kind of let them squabble amongst each other this race is going to be a lot about kind of pack psychology and um, what to do in certain situations when to push when to attack when to help someone when to go and kill someone um, so if you like that kind of stuff, this race is absolutely everything and it just builds and builds and builds. As you get to know some of the personalities of the drivers you're racing against, it's something I find a lot in karting. In karting, often I go on the grid, I don't really know a lot of the drivers I'm racing against personally, I just know their helmets and their race suits and I have to kind of understand what their racing personality is like. As we go a little bit deep into the last corner, it's a very tricky corner and at the beginning of this race I was taking it very poorly the chicane as well, I definitely did not want to hit that chicane. This is the real death chicane. This is the British death chicane. Uh, not, the, not that one in Croatia. Uh, but we do okay. And the magical number again is going to be between 7 and 7.5 seven and tenths. Normally I find if you can get someone more than 7 tenths behind them, behind you even, you will drop them. So Sam at the moment is four and a half, five, But that means he's still going to be getting our slipstream. He's still going to be holding on to a kind of imaginary rope behind the back of our mini and we're kind of pulling him closer and closer so that's where you can see that gap in the top left and that tower gets smaller because it's in our slipstream and to break that we want to get more than seven tenths ahead that really is kind of the critical um, objective of this part of the race because if we can do that 
let them squabble, it'll be an easy victory. Spoiler, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> There's no way I'm not going to pleb it. So uh, let's see what happens. As um, things are getting quite interesting behind. And there has been a change of position. We've now got a Dane to worry about. Jam 666, the Devil's Jam. Who is still in the slip. So he managed to get the position and stay in my slipstream. So tactically that's worked out for him. And you could say the pack if he's a faster driver. If he'd gone for that move and as a result of them battling, they'd drop behind seven tenths, then they'd really need to work together to bump draft to catch up with me. But well, we're going to go into this last corner again. Only a nine lap race this. We're almost on lap three already. And this corner I did very badly last time. Let's see if you can work it out. You kind of be, want to be very delicate on the brakes and uh, go into third. Don't go up into fourth, which I don't do. I think I did that by mistake in practice once you lose a whole load of time. It's tempting to do it. You get right to the ed edge of the rev ban, but you definitely want to keep it in third. When you go into these road cars, gear changes just become so important. And uh, you normally want to rev them out quite a bit as well. Going into turn one this time, are we going to get close to that apex? We're fairly close. I don't lift this time, which is good. I was worried about the effect that the heavy fuel tank would have on the heaviness of the car hadn't driven this race before but it was fine um not a real noticeable difference unlike some other categories right the dane is now very 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 close behind is he going to be as polite answer looks to be yes he's bump drafting us so at the moment he deems us a worthy enough kind of opponent to push along rather than go for the throw i was a bit worried here about being punted but i just braked at my normal time and then we've managed to open up a little bit of a gap again but that won't be enough down the back straight these corners here I really enjoyed. You can take a very late apex, late, later than that, and get on the power really, really early. And the key to the exit is actually not to apply enough steering lock um, for your revs to drop. So you kind of want to take a very, very, very smooth exit. Really reminds me of driving kind of four-stroke carts, M35 carts at, at Daytona, Milton Keynes, uh, the Sodi carts at um, Daytona Sandown Park. You have to take very, very smooth lines. This is quite... I think quite a good combo for learning as a driver as well. You can't get out of power by putting the throttle down. Putting the throttle down won't get you out of anything. <laughs> Nothing will happen for a long time. So it's all about conserving speed and momentum, which is a really good driving technique. Going through the chicane again, almost going to be on lap four. We take a very, very, very bumpy ride through there. So we've lost a lot of momentum. And the Dane behind, in fact, we've now got two Danes behind and then a Finn. So it's a bit like, um, what was it called when all the the Nordic people came over to um, the Vikings a bit like the Vikings again at uh, Goodwood as I get absolutely pillaged here by the first Dane and we're going to slot in behind it so we've had to concede pole position it's never or, or first place it's never a nice thing in a race when you've been in first place to give it up it makes you look in my position in my opinion it makes you look kind of weak it makes you look vulnerable to further cars behind you lose that kind of sense of invincibility so we've lost that now we're now on the pack we've really got a scrap for it it's a bit like what Anthony Joshua lost to Andy Ruiz um, is what's just happened there as we take another bad corner and kind of go defensive but then I take my line what's going to happen here someone tries to go for it then they don't then they do I'm in a little bit of a sandwich most important thing is that we don't lose touch with the leader and we're right on the cusp now, he's 7.9, 8 tenths, 8.2 tenths, so we're losing touch here, we need to work together now, otherwise we'll go off into the sunset. Let's see what happens here at the penultimate corner, really, it's one real last corner and then you have a chicane in my opinion. Um, but let's see what happens, see this lap, we're a second behind the time on our previous laps, so it's a lot of time this lap we're battling. See the driver ahead gets his um, back end out. And we're going to gain time. We're going to be back in the slip. I've got two drivers inside. Difficult decision here. I let it go. I let it go. I break and I let them go. Let me know in the comments. Would you do the same thing there? Would you do the same thing? We got a that Dutch driver behind us. I think we're racing within quali. But we've had to let the front three go. But in my opinion, the risk just wasn't worth it to try and go two or three wide to that chicane. That could be race ending. So I thought about the the war not just battle and I've, I've kind of let them go there and we're about to catch them up actually so arguably you could say that was a good strategic decision although that will kind of still yet to be seen but if we can really get back into them and if they start battling as well 
Because maybe we've buoyed the confidence of second and third with that move. Maybe they think they're the big dogs now. Having overtaken me at the chicane, they'll go for first place. Let's see. The Finn in P2 does look kind of racy. He's very, very close to uh, the Devil's Jam. Let's see what happens here. Different lines ahead of us. We're not going to drop the cars behind as uh, P1 goes quite defensive. The Finn thinks about going around the outside. P3's hanging around as well. And in all of that, we're just going to gain a load of time. And we're back in the mix. So, lap five, we're going into lap six. And we're definitely in this hunt for the top four. We've got Sam behind us, who's almost seven tenths away. So, potentially, we could lose that pack behind. And we could kind of try and solidify a top four. Though in this race, I've really, 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 really wanted to win. I felt like this race was here for the taking. So, I'm here... 100% to win this race, not really interested in second, third or fourth as uh, we head into chicane again and again I kind of break early, take it easy that means I'm going to get a better exit see here I've got a little bit of an overspeed and I decided to try and go for the overtake here, but I didn't really have the pace to, to back it up actually, now we're in a very awkward position side by side where we're just in danger of letting the front two get away so Really, I should be giving this up. See, I'm kind of a half throttle there, but I don't give it up. And Sam now behind, who has taken probably a normal line amongst all of that, is now going to catch up with us. So he was seven tenths behind. He's now right up there. Um, although the pack behind is now a long way away. So maybe we've solidified kind of the top five. Although, again, we've lost another position. So now we're down to P5. Kind of doing a, a bit of a bot ass strategy at the moment going down all the positions. The fin ahead though still looks very racy. So potentially shenanigans can occur. You can see how this race is, even though these cars aren't the fastest, because of the lack of grip, because of the lack of power, the race really is on the knife edge. It's, it's ruthless. If you, if you have a bad corner, you will just lose all your time down the straight and you'll be out of the slipstream. You have to be so precise in these things. As um, unusual situation here because I think we just did an overtake there. I was looking at the Delta, the car's head. They're just coming back into us. So even though there's three of them, they should be working together. You can see they're not really working together. And we're actually just about going to edge into that 7.5 tenths gap. So anything can happen based on this last corner. I reckon they're too close to kind of all take good lines through there. So let's see what happens. Again, the situation I kind of break a little bit earlier. Gives yourself the time and space to react to what goes ahead. And we're going to do that again in the chicane break quite early try and get a good exit and again we got the overspeed i'm going to try and overtake on the outside not going to happen so what we're going to do this time take a look at my throttle see there's just a couple of lifts lifting a little bit lifting a little bit just going to slot in um, looks like uh, that no fear driver in p6 might have really caught up so he was more than 1.5 seconds behind now he's much closer he might be bridged by sam so we might have more cars to worry about as we're reaching the end game now this race and we've learned quite a bit about the personality. Sam's very respectful so far. We've seen the guy ahead does seem to be a little bit erratic with his lines. The Finnish driver is always looking to, to overtake. And uh, the Devil's Jam, Jam 66 in first place, does like to take defensive lines. So those are the kind of the personalities that we've got on the table at the moment. And we've got myself, obviously. I also, I have a personality. Um, I'm sure what it is, though. Let's see what's going to happen here. You see the finish driver going for a big move, and he's going to go for it, and he's going to get the move done, but go very deep. Is he going to be vulnerable to cut back? We're also in the mix now. So here we go. We've got two Danish drivers going side by side, and I suppose staying true to my British heritage, I'm going to try and cause an international rift here by uh, bump grafting the Danish driver on the right and see if we can kind of uh, get ahead, or at the very least kind of just sort some chaos out. That would be good news for us. Let's see what happens over with the finish driver. Is he going to take a very clean exit through? Oh, the... Okay, fine. Optimistic by both of us. P2 and P3. Sam is going to follow us through as well. And I think the Danish driver ahead is just about in the slip of the finish driver. He carries a lot of speed through there. He carries a lot of speed but goes a, a long way off track. So you can do the mass now. If you subtract a, a second to the leader to four tenths to um, P2, then we're going to be okay. We're Together, we're in the slip of the finish driver. Two laps to go. And it's uh, bubbling very nicely. My heartbeat, I could feel, was starting to go up as the jigsaw pieces are falling into place. 
Sam still behind us as they want to watch out for. Finished driver ahead kind of looks to be trying to break the slip of P2. But potentially if we can stay this close, I can bump P2 down the bat straight. Let's see what happens in this very fast flowing right-hander. That goes into a bit more of an abrupt left-hander, but ideally you want to be over that curve. Don't get on the power too early, you'll just understeer. Let the car do its thing until you get into the dip and use the camber to allow you to get on the power without understeering. These corners here, I've spoken about how much fun I find them. It looks visibly closer ahead. It looks like our Danish friend is going to get in at the fin. And uh, we might be able to do a little push here as well. So we're heading into the last lap. That 9 out of 9, 240 of your finest FIA Nations Championship points available. And I'm in a pretty good position here. I'm feeling pretty good. Remember, I was on pole position for Quali. So I feel like I've got, I've got outright pace here. And it's not a bad position to be in. It's a bit like cycling in that pursuit they do, where actually you want to start the last lap second. And uh, the fintech's a very bad line to Ash Kane, I noticed. He was kind of making very tight angles. And Nudson goes wide again. What we're going to do here, we're going to, we're going to bump him. Sam is eight tenths behind. So let's kind of consolidate this. Hope the Danish driver can have some good corners and uh, make it a three-way fight with the Finn, maybe down the back straight. We don't want the two French drivers behind getting involved. We're sitting pretty at the moment in third, and I have to say, I still, I don't know, how would you play the odds on this? From, in my head right now, I'm odds-on favourite to win this race. I'm odds-on favourite. I was on pole position, I'm in P3, five tenths off the lead, a lot of slipstream, I've, I've kind of worked out a lot of calls on the track, I'm feeling really, really, really good. As uh, we just do kind of a little nudge of the guy ahead, we're going to lose a lot of time here. Now, I wasn't too worried because we're going to be in the slip of the guys ahead, but suddenly, look at the guys behind. The French drivers and another Finn, and then another Dane, are now very, very, very close. So hang on, what's going on here? And I go wide. And I go wide. So the tables have really turned here. Now we've got to look backwards, direct the guns backwards. And uh, we're kind of, we're still in the battle for the lead because... If they really squabble, they'll lose a load of time. But we're also in danger of now losing a load of positions. We've got a driver we've never met before. All we know about him is he's French. So we're going to stick to the right here. Is he going to go for it? Is he going to bump draft us? He bump drafts us here. We get a little bump, but then he sneaks up the inside. The guys ahead go really wide. And in fact, we all go really wide. If one of us had taken the right line, we'd have it easy in this contact of the chicane. And I can't go anywhere. I have to hit the finish driver. And now we've got, who's this behind? It's another Finnish driver who's, we've never met before. And Sam behind as well. We're going to finish this race in P5. Now, what a crazy ending. <laughs> what a crazy ending. I thought I was odds on favourite to win that race. And then just a kind of innocuous bad corner there at the back end of the track. When I had to look backwards and then... You know, I, I think I got a little nudge into the braking zone, but I also just probably went 2D. If anyone had taken the normal line there, from anyone could have won that race. Um, it's incredible, really. So we're taking 199 FIA Nations points, which I will not turn down. I'll be very grateful for those. And it was a great race. If you did enjoy it, please do hit the like and subscribe. I really appreciate it when you do that. I really hope you enjoy these races. Let me know if you've got any thoughts on them as well. This was a great race. FIA is going to be back, I believe, in February. So we'll be doing a lot of league races. We'll be doing a lot of open lobbies, daily races, stuff like that, until the launch of GT7 on March 4th, 2020. We will be there. This was a great race. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.